In this video, we're going to look at percent as relative change. Let's look at a few situations. So here we're going to look at salary increases. The table below shows the 2018-2019 salaries of several employees of FlexCorp. So we have employee Maria Chavez, and in 2018, she earned a salary of $200,000. And then in 2019, her salary was $230,000. Then Peter Chin, his salary in 2018 was $120,000 while in 2019 it went up to $144,000. And then finally, Lawrence Cromwell, his salary in 2018 was $60,000, and then it went up to $72,000 in 2019. So now we want to answer a few questions about their salaries. So. We're going to calculate the raise each employee received. In order to calculate the raise of each of these employees, we would, we, we would like to be able to subtract their 2018 salary from their 2019 salary. Now let's see what that means. So what we're going to do is look at Marie Chavez's salary. So we're going to subtract her 2018 salary from her 2019 salary. And we get that the difference between the two is $30,000. Similarly, we're going to do that for Peter Chin. So we're going to subtract his 2018 salary from his 2019 salary and we get a difference of $24,000. And then finally for Lawrence Cromwell his 2018 salary we subtract that from his 2019 salary and we get a difference of $12,000. So the raises calculated in the previous slide represent the absolute changes in the employee's salaries. The absolute change is the total amount of change between two numbers. So in the event of an increase, the absolute change is positive, and in the event of a decrease, the absolute change is negative. So since all of these employees, their absolute change was positive, that means all of their salaries actually went up, which we saw that they did between 2018 and 2019. Now let's look at the second question. At first, Mich Maria Chavez was pleased with her raise. But when she learned the amounts of her colleagues' raises, she, want, she went to see the CEO of the company and complained that the amount of her raise was too low compared to the others. So what was the issue? So we want to figure out why would she think that her raise was too low when her absolute salary was obviously higher than the other two employees. The issue that comes up here is something called relative change. What we just calculated was the absolute change, and this is the amount of increase or decrease which we just found of the, of the flex core, core employees. But relative change is a way to compare the amount of change to the original amount, meaning the original amount that all the workers made or their salaries in 2018. So let us, let us go to the whiteboard and calculate this for each of the FlexCore employees. We want to calculate the relative change. 
And in order to calculate the relative change, we must do it in the following way. So we need to know what the absolute change is. And this is what we calculated earlier. And this is really also all we can say this is the amount of change. And we're going to divide that by the original amount. And in order to get it as a percent, we're going to multiply it by 100%. So in the case of Maria Chavez, the amount of change in her case was the difference in her salary between 2019 and 2018. And we found that to be 30,000 dollars. And her original salary in 2018 was 200,000 dollars. And then in order to make it a relative percent, we're going to have to multiply it by 100 percent. So we get when we divide this, and I'm just crossing out the zeros because they're exactly the same. So we get 3 over 20 times 100 percent, and this would be equal to 0 0.15 times 100 percent, which is equal to 15 percent. So she got a, essentially a 15 percent pay raise. Now let's look at the pay raises of her colleagues. So we're going to do the same for Peter Chen. Chin. And we found earlier that his at the absolute change in his salary was $24,000. And the original amount that he made in 2018 was $120,000. And in order to find the relative change, we'll multiply that by 100. So we get, crossing out, 24 over 120 times 100%, and we find we get 0 0.20 times 100%. And this means that he got a 20% increase in his salary. Hmm, Maria Chavez is thinking. Now let's see what happens with her other colleague, Lawrence Cromwell. Now we found that Lawrence Cromwell's absolute change, or the amount of change in his salary between 2018 and 2019 was $10,000. And the original amount he made in 2018 was $60,000. And again, multiply it by 100%. And crossing out the extra zeros, we get 1 over 6 times 100%. And that would be equal to 0 0.20 times 100%, which is equal to 20%. Hmm, now Maria Chavez is getting very, very suspicious and wondering, Hmm, how come my, I only got a 15% increase and these two guys got a 20% increase? So that is why she went to the CEO and complained.
So let's return to the PowerPoint and review our calculations. So for Maria Chavez, her relative change was 15%, as we just found. For Peter Chin, his relative change was 20%, and Lawrence Cromwell's was 20%. So she felt a little bit cheated. So based on what we just learned about Maria's situation, what do you think would be a fair raise for Maria to receive? So let's go back to the whiteboard and calculate out what we think Maria, Maria should receive if she was to have a 20% increase in her salary from 2018 to 2019, just like her colleagues. We want to figure out now how much she should get a raise or how much raise she should get. So if she's going to get a 20% raise, what does that mean? 20%, well, in order to do is the calculation of 20%, we have to convert that into a decimal. So we convert 20% into a decimal, and then we take that and we multiply it by the original amount she made in 2018. So that would be 0 0.20 times the $200,000 she made in 2018. And we multiply that, and we find that she should have gotten a raise of $40,000. rather than only $30,000 to be in step with her colleagues. So this means that in 2019, to be on par with her colleagues, $40,000 should have been added to her 2018 salary, and this is a 40. $40,000 should have been added to her 2018 salary to make a 2019 salary of $240,000. So that would be a more fair wage if she's going to keep in step with her colleagues and have a 20% pay raise. So returning to the PowerPoint, let's review what we just did on the whiteboard. So we, she, we want to have her, she wants to get a 20% raise just like her colleagues. So that means we have to take the 20% and convert it into a decimal. And then multiply that by her original salary in 2018. So therefore, she should get a $40,000 increase in her pay in 2019. And that would be a more fair raise and comparable to her colleagues. So that she would, in the end, in 2019, she should get paid $240,000. Now let's look at a situation where we're going to apply relative change to economic growth. So here we're going to look at the gross domestic product of three countries between the year 2000 and the year 2010. So the three countries we are looking at is the United States, India, and Japan. In order to calculate the relative change of each country's gross domestic product, we must first calculate their absolute change from 2000 to 2010. So, for example, in the U.S., the 2010 gross domestic product was 14000 945 billion dollars and we subtract that 
from the 2000 at the 2000 gross domestic product and that was 12,682 billion dollars and we get when we subtract them their difference we get 2,263 billion dollars now, in order to calculate the relative change, we take this absolute change and we divide it by the original amount in 2000. And notice how the dollar signs and the billions cancel out because they're exactly the same thing. So to make things easier and to shorten the writing, I just wrote 2,263 over 12,682, and then, of course, I multiplied it by 100, and that was equal to about 17.8%, and then rounded it to the nearest percent, which was about 18%. Similarly, for India where the absolute change between 2000 and 2010 was $673 billion. And then I took this difference, or absolute change, and I divided it by the original amount in 2000, and I multiplied that by 100, and I got 90, about 97.3 and rounded it to the nearest percent. So I got about 97%. And then finally, Japan, where the absolute change was $763 billion. And I took the $763 billion and divided by the original $4,732 billion and doing proper cancellation times 100, and I got about 16%. So now we want to ask ourselves which of the above countries' economic growth was the fastest and which of these countries grew the most? Well, this is kind of a question of semantics and about the words and what do the words mean. So, the Indian economy can be understood to have grown the fastest, meaning the highest relative change, while the U.S. economy grew the most or the highest absolute change between the years 2000 and 2010. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and that will help you with your class and your coursework, etc. So take care and be well. Bye.